Taylor and Jack and Nani Stiles here and Stephen Margo Foley that uh, you never expected we'd all be sitting here this evening. We have a lot to praise God for. Uh, last year I was traveling with Dennis in India and I was asked to introduce Dennis. What to say? <laughs> I decided the most significant thing that I could share is that I know that Dennis is a man who is faithful in his commitment to the Word of God. And we have seen God bless that commitment. We have seen God continue to multiply the use of His Word uh, in accomplishing what He desires around the world. And we do have a lot to give Him uh, the praise and the glory for this evening. So we'll now hear from Dennis. Thank you, Jeff. I'm not really sure I can do this tonight. Uh, it's uh, frankly more overwhelming than I thought it might be. Uh, it's in the same category as performing the wedding ceremony for my daughter Tiffany, if that gives you any idea. I am overwhelmed at God's goodness. I've got some very, very bad news for you, however. They did not save the best till last. <laughs> I've already heard the best. And I'm impressed with what God has done through the lives of those who shared tonight. But I do want to share just a few things with you briefly tonight uh, from my perspective. And you must understand that my perspective is totally different than anybody else's in this room. And yet, in many, many ways, it's similar. I've been driven personally and professionally by two verses of Scripture. One of those is in the book of Ezra, strangely enough. Ezra 7.10, which says that Ezra set his heart to study the Word of God, to obey it, and to teach it in Israel. And that verse uh, drove me into ministry 18 or so years ago. And it is the desire of my heart both to study the Word of God, to obey it, and then to teach it. And that's the sequence in which we try to do BTCP. The second verse that's had the same kind of impact on my life personally and with regard to the ministry is John 15, 16. Where Jesus gathered the disciples and looked at them and said, You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you that you should go and that you should bear fruit, fruit that remains. I was not really sure I knew what that verse meant. I do now to some extent. And this gathering tonight is evidence of the fruit of God's Spirit working not just in my life, but in the lives of countless of hundreds of people who are involved with BTCP around the world. What drove me into ministry to start with was the haunting realization that I was not quite sure that my life counted for much. While I was practicing law, I was making a lot of money. I even had my first client here tonight. Uh, and it went very, very well. But in the process of practicing law for 13 years, I had to ask myself some very, very serious questions. One of which was, am I really making any difference whatsoever for the cause of Christ? I was a Christian. I was teaching Sunday school, serving as a deacon, and doing all of those kinds of things that we do in church. But I was not really sure that I was making an impact. Or that it could be said of me what was said of David, that after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, he fell asleep, that is, he died. And that whole issue of bearing fruit, not for my credit and glory, because I take no credit for anything that's transpired tonight. God chose me as the instrument to produce the curriculum and as the person to found this ministry. He could have used any number of people in this room or any number of people from any other place around the world. But He chose me for that process. And I'm very, very grateful for the fruit that's being born in my life and through the ministry of BTCP. It is a strange story. It's a story that I'll tell a little bit in brief tonight. A story of divine encounters, of miraculous connections, of circumstances that only God can arrange. And those of you who are in our church service this morning uh, know how that works <laughs> with lights out. Uh, God is amazing in what He does. And I'll be honest with you, I had no clue that this is what God was up to. I had no clue that a night like this would take place, or that 10 years of ministry and to update the video, 
Over 7,000 men have graduated, over 10,000 are in training now in 54 countries around the world. And it is growing so rapidly that we're scratching our heads and praying and asking God how we deal with that issue. But I went to the seminary in Dallas, 1982. Did not really want to return to Atlanta. Pat and I both really wanted to go somewhere else and do something, whatever the Lord had for us. But as the Lord would have it, He brought us back to Atlanta, put me on staff at First Baptist, our home church, where I served for 11 years. And it was in the process of serving there that, that God really developed the ministry of BTCP. But God has a really strange sense of humor from time to time. Any of you uh, know what I mean when I say that. The first two trips I made to Africa were substitutes for someone else. I was a second stringer, a utility infielder, someone who really wasn't supposed to go at all. In 1987, Pat and I made a trip to Africa for about three weeks. Neither one of us had a passport before that period of time. We'd never been out of the country. Really had not been further north than Washington, D.C. And I won't tell you how far, far west we've been. We had been to Miami on the south end, but that was about it, folks. <laughs> a very, very sheltered life indeed. But God opened a door for us and opened our eyes in the process of that three-week trip to Kenya and then to Zambia. And it was a wonderful experience for us. I preached, I visited Bible colleges and seminaries. We visited mission points on the field. We talked with missionaries. We looked at libraries and Bible schools. We did all kinds of things, took some wonderful safaris and some wonderful pictures. And we came back home. Changed a bit, perhaps. But in the final analysis, back to routine, back to what we were doing before. And then a year later, in 1988, God arranged for me to go back to Kenya as a substitute for someone else. That was part of that miracle. The second part of that miracle was the fact that the Foreign Mission Board at that time had put together an evangelism trip to do street evangelism in Mombasa, Kenya. If you know anything about Kenya, you know that it's one of the most evangelized countries on the face of the planet. The evangelism teams in and out all day long, every day. And in the process of that, there were four couples, three of whom are here tonight, who asked permission to do something other than street evangelism in Mombasa, simply because the need for discipleship training and leadership training we thought was even greater. And God supernaturally arranged for approval for us to do that. Pat and myself, along with Jack and Dottie Stiles, who are here, and uh, Richard and Helen Taylor, and then Stephen Marvel Foley were the fourth couple. Hmm. And we spent a week or so in Mombasa, Kenya, in the summer of 1988, and I conducted my first pastor's conference. I'd never done one before, but I was convinced that that's really what the Lord wanted us to do. And in the process of that conference with 93 Kenyan and Ugandan pastors, God gave me a burden for those men. Not a single one of those men had ever been to Bible College and Seminary. They were not going to get there. Some were 50 years old, some were 20 years old, some had churches with buildings, some had houses for churches, some uh, congregation of some of these men consisted of their families, some were ordained, some were not, and on and on the story goes. They had two things in common. They knew, knew the Lord Jesus Christ, their personal Savior, and secondly, they had no training. I really didn't understand that, but it was out of that trip that God gave me both a burden for those men and a vision to do something about that. I still did not know what that meant. What it meant in the final analysis was the production of curriculum. I was not trained as a writer. I was trained as a lawyer. I did not intend to write. But then I didn't intend to do a lot of things the Lord has had me do over the years. And the Lord's plans are not always ours, are they? But the goal for all of us is to, to get in tune with God, to get on His agenda and accomplish whatever it is He has for us, and in the process bear fruit that He enables to be born. God miraculously arranged for a set of circumstances at church which allowed me to write six days a week, six hours a day for 16 months to produce the lawyer version of BTCP in handwritten form, 3,000 pages. And I mentioned in church this morning, we found the autographs the other day. Uh, the originals, they're still there. Uh, barely legible. They were barely legible then, actually. <laughs> barely legible now because they faded some more. But I look back at that whole process and realize that God was involved from the very, very start. His hand was on me. His hand was on the ministry. 
that God put us together uh, in June of 1990 with an AIM missionary by the name of Chuck Kinzer, who'd served on the field in Kenya for 30 plus years. He had men to train, he had placed me, he didn't have any curriculum. And God had provided the curriculum uh, through my efforts, enabled by the Spirit, and Bill Bissett, who's here tonight, was the first teacher. I spent two months with him in June of 1990, teaching the first group of men. And you must understand that I'm not a visionary. Most of you have figured that out by now. I'm a bit of a plotter. Uh, I get things done in a systematic, systematic orderly fashion. Uh, consistency is one of my hallmarks. Having been born old and having a relapse is another. <laughs> so my vision was let's train 20 men a year in Kenya. Let's do it in English so we don't have to mess with translations. And if we expand it all, let's expand the areas where English is a strong second language, urban areas where transportation and facilities and things like that are not an issue. That was my vision. That's not a bad vision. Please understand. It's really not. But that was the vision, the extent of the vision that I had. Ten years later, God has seen fit to give us 7,000 graduates. That may not seem significant to you. That represents men, pastoral leaders who have been through 500 hours of class time, have completed the basic equivalent of a good Bible college or seminary education, have also studied in English the NIV Study Bible and can now perform in ministry as God really intended for them to perform. The translations actually blow my mind. They're harder to do than the original was to write. And yet God has seen fit to open door after door after door to provide opportunities for the material to be translated into key languages around the world. And as I think back through that process and reflect on the past just a bit, I realize that this was not my plan, it's not my ministry, it was not my power, it was not my agenda, it was all God's. Now I was a willing participant, and as the plan unfolded, I agreed to walk down that particular path. And I would challenge you with regard to the same issue, whatever that path might be for you. But as I look back on the past, I realize that God has miraculously put together an organization that really shouldn't exist. There's no way with the staff that we have in Atlanta and even the network down around the world that we should be able to do what we do. But we do, because God's in it. And I thought through that process with regard to, to why we are where we are today. One reason is that we have uniquely honored the Word of God. We really do believe that God's Word is the training tool that needs to be used for these pastors. And yes, it in fact does work, as many have testified to here tonight. But a second reason that this ministry has been successful by anybody's standards is the fact that God's heart for equipping and training these pastors is greater than ours. You may think that you have a passion for it, and I do have a passion for it. I've devoted my life to it. But I'm not even in the same league with God with regard to that issue. It is a desire of His heart that these pastoral leaders be trained and be trained effectively. So God's honored His own word and honored those who have been willing to be obedient in that process. And so 10 years later, here we are today. Bill Bissett is here, and I reminisced a bit this morning about the morning in June of 1990 when he and I we're at Mayfield Guest House and took our course manuals and NIV study Bibles and headed out to the Africa, the Good Shepherd Church, to teach those first group of students. I've never been the same since, and praise the Lord, they were not the same either. And I think back through the whole process and realize that it was simply God engineering circumstances, God causing things to happen, God moving His plan along, and all I did is cooperate in the process. But we look at the need and we're overwhelmed by the need. There are at least 2 million identifiable pastors in the world today who have no basic training. That's a very conservative figure by Ralph Winter of the U.S. Center for World Missions. And catching that curve is one of the things that we believe God would have us to try to do within BTCP. And I look at the organization that God has put together. I look at the men and the women who are involved with us. I look at Jeff Barber and Randy Gardner, Kevin Bacon, Bob Cranfield, Karen Wiggum, and Susan Gleaton, 
those who work with us on an ongoing basis in the Atlanta office and many of those that you've met tonight who, who really are staff or associate staff overseas and I realize what God has done with a very, very small group of people. There's some unique things about these co-laborers, however. I've been involved in uh, ministry and the business world at every level of the food chain. I've been at the very bottom of the food chain working for an hourly wage uh, which is not a bad thing, but I've been there, and I've been in the middle, and I've been at the top of the food chain. But I can tell you I've never worked with a group of people quite like this one. We're all intent on one purpose. We all have one goal. We really do work well together as a team because no one has a private agenda. No one's trying to get somewhere else or be something that they're not simply trying to make the contribution that they feel God has for them with regard to the ministry. And what an incredible pleasure it is to work uh, in that kind of environment. God has given us the same kind of men around the world, and you've, you've heard from many of them tonight, who really don't have a private agenda. Their agenda is God's agenda. Their agenda is BTCP's agenda. They, they don't have a private one, and that makes all the difference in the world. And then I look at Genesis Bible Church, and I realize the miraculous way in which God has created both a viable local church in Atlanta, Georgia, but more than that, a means for providing the financial resources to train these thousands and thousands of pastors around the world. Over the past four years, the people of Genesis Bible Church have given over $2.3 million of net funds to help fund the overseas ministry. Out of a church of 130 members, it's nothing short of a miracle and continues to be a miracle. So I'm very grateful for the way in which God has operated to cause that to happen over this period of time. Where do we go from here? Well, we go wherever God wants us to go. This ministry has developed and flourished and has been successful because we have simply responded to the need as God has brought the need across our paths. And many who have testified tonight have shared the way in which God has done that in many, many cases. But we see a church growing by leaps and bounds around the world. We see gospel responsive areas of the world, thousands and thousands of churches coming online, if you will, every single day around the world without trained leaders. We really do believe that BTCP has been designed by God to be a part of that solution, not the total solution, but a part of that solution. And we're looking for ways in which we can help answer that incredible, incredible challenge. None of you would like to do what you do professionally without training. And it's inconceivable to me that a pastor <coughs> would attempt to pastor a church without proper training. But that's what we find around the world. And the challenge for BTCP as we think about the future of it is what role do we play in that process? How can we help catch that curve because we're losing ground every single day around the world. As new churches are planted, there's leadership there, but the leadership does not have basic Bible training, basic ministry skills in order to function effectively in ministry. And God has enabled us to begin to think through strategically some ideas that we think might help us with regard to that issue. And I'd like to share just very briefly with you tonight uh, two or three ideas related to that. My purpose really tonight in this whole event, which is actually Linda Henson's idea, and I want to thank Linda for that, and for all of the work that's gone into this weekend. There really were two basic purposes for this gathering. One was celebration. Just celebrating the Lord, celebrating the Lord's faithfulness, realizing that His hand has been on us individually and collectively as a ministry and on Genesis Bible Church and just praising Him and thanking Him for what He's done and acknowledging before you and before the world that we are absolutely confident and aware of the fact that apart from God and the work of His Holy Spirit, none of this would have taken place and none of this would be taking place now. And we're very, very grateful for the fruit that's been born through His Spirit. So we wanted to celebrate and give you an opportunity to relate to one another and for us to come together as a group of like-minded people who are really intent on participating in the Great Commission and just celebrate God's goodness and God's faithfulness. And I think we've done that very effectively. The second thing that I wanted to do tonight really was to cast a bit of a vision. And even though I'm not a visionary, 
God seems to be giving me some that are really beyond my comprehension. I would really like to see BTCP move from its present posture of training about 10,000 leaders a year to training 100,000 leaders a year over the next five to six years. Now that's still just a drop in the bucket. I hope you understand that. But we believe that this ministry, even as it's presently composed with the network of associates and ministries that partner with us around the world, that that, in fact, can be done. I really believe that BTCP can become the church leadership training what the Jesus film is to evangelism. And those of you who are familiar with the Jesus film realize that it's probably the single most effective evangelism tool to ever hit planet Earth. And God has uniquely honored that film because it essentially is Luke's gospel retold on film. And countless millions have come to know the Lord as a result of that film. And they have put together, Campus Crusade and others have put together for that film a large number of strategy that has allowed them to have the, the film now translated into 600 plus languages. And if you don't have electricity, they're portable generators. If you don't have a screen, you use a sheet or the side of a building or whatever it takes to get the job done. And I'd like us to think about that same issue with regard to BTCP. What would it take for a really large number strategy? Now, actually, 10,000 men a year is a large number strategy. But we believe that God has positioned us and really challenged us to do more than that. And we're asking for your help. There are a number of things that would be involved in that process. One is the issue of the materials themselves, this 10-course curriculum that the Lord enabled me to develop and which has been printed and distributed primarily from India, as Herb shared with you tonight. And I, too, am really sorry that Anil could not be here and share uh, what God has done in his life and, and the life of really the people that work in his printing factory. I've been there in Bangalore to see what God has done through that miraculous process which has allowed us to reduce the cost of a shipped manual produced and shipped from $16 to $3. And that's been one of the ways that we have funded capacity over the last few years. One of the issues is with regard to materials. We believe we need another major printing and shipping distribution point for BTCP. We think that will be in Brazil. And as Eric shared tonight, I think there's significant interest there and all the pieces uh, appear to be fitting together the way we can do exactly that. That's one piece of the puzzle. The second piece is to focus on the six globally strategic languages that God has given to us. One of those, of course, is English. You heard Israel share tonight with regard to India. There are so many languages in India that are not spoken by different people in India that English is the most common language. I could use English in more parts of India than any other Indian, any single Indian language. And so English is still an extraordinarily strategic language for us. French is also strategic, and in West Africa we've had uh, excellent success in starting programs there, which Sam Pong has helped with, along with Steve Newport, who's here tonight with the Global Mission Fellowship, has helped us with that implementation. Russian is another, Spanish, Portuguese, and Chinese. And we begin to think through the process and all of those are complete. They're not all in final finished production form, but they're all complete and most of them are being used. You realize that those six globally strategic languages essentially cover most of the face of the earth. And if we can focus on those and fine tune those languages and produce them in mass quantities, then we really believe we can train 100,000 a year. There's another element involved in the process of moving from 10,000 students to 100,000 students over the next five or six years, and that's manpower. God has given us some incredibly effective ways to do ministry. Dr. Flanagan shared tonight how Luther Rice Seminary has become a partner with us and uses our material in many, many parts of the world. We really are an enabling ministry. We're a trainer of trainers. We are a provider of curriculum and a concept to use that curriculum which enables other ministries to accomplish the purpose that God has for them. That's the way in which BTCP has expanded. If we talked about capacity issues, most ministries, most organizations and businesses would talk about building a larger staff and building buildings. 
We don't own a building anywhere in the world. We have a staff of about eight in Atlanta. We do have other people around the world who work with us. Some raise support full time, some are supported by other ministries and really do our ministry with the permission of those ministries. And we partner with many, many mission agencies and other organizations around the world. And they do the work of ministry on the field. We enable them to do it and equip them to do it. And that's the way in which we believe we can expand. We do not intend to increase the Atlanta staff significantly, maybe a couple of people, a Latin coordinator for one, perhaps a fund development officer, perhaps someone else, but not much. That's not my intention to oversee a large ministry, nor do I want to spend enormous amounts of money maintaining a ministry organization. I want the money to go to men and materials, and we really believe that God will give us a way to do that. Uh, part of our ministry is accomplished, as I said, through associate field staff. Uh, three of those men are here tonight who are fully supported by other ministries. Uh, and those three men are beginning to have a significant impact within their own mission agencies. David Nelson, Steve Newport, and Don Brody are beginning to have an impact through their own mission agencies as they carry out our ministry around the world. And God has given us a unique way to do that, and we believe that their tribe should increase dramatically. And it's one of the ways in which we believe that God will give us to do that. Another area in which we need to strengthen our ministry if we're going to do this well is in the area of measurement or evaluation. I talked about that a little bit this morning in the message at Genesis Bible Church. We need to know what we're producing. Now, Bill Bissett and others have done some case studies and followed students in their ministries, but we need more work.